Welcome to My Shift Setup, a series where we sit down with real Shift users to see how they've customized their browser to get more done their way. I'm Michael Fouché, VP of Product at Shift, and in each of these episodes, I'll be talking with someone who's made Shift work for them. If you're new to Shift, it's the first fully customizable browser where you can either select a template or drag and drop to create your own custom template. You can then add spaces and apps to reflect your workflow. Let's get into it. Today, I'd like to introduce my first guest, which is Matt Longpre, and he's a lead developer here at Shift. How are you doing, Matt? I'm great, Michael. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. You know, Shift is, has a bit of a story for you. So tell me how you first heard about it and started using it. Yeah, I've actually been using Shift since I think around 2016 or 17, so pretty pretty recent after it came out. At the time, I was doing some IT consulting, so I worked with a lot of different companies, and I, I liked creating different spaces for each one of them, and I think that was like pretty... I was around the same time as like Chrome profiles were coming out, and I kind of liked it better in Shift, just keeping it all in one window, and it wasn't until 2021 that I, I came and worked worked here. You know, and we'll get more into this. We've just had a big launch of the Shift browser, and you've had a big part in that. But now that you've had a chance and you've been working on Shift for so long, you know, how have you customized your Shift for your day-to-day -day dev work? Yeah, I would be happy to show you. So what I kind of did is try to strip away as much as I could and kind of get right down to basics, kind of down to first principles and see what I really need as I go through my work. So I started with just a single bar up at the top for a, a little bit there and started adding the search bar and tabs. These are tabs here. And I just sort of started with that and went through my, my work day um, and started adding things as I felt I need, needed them. So pretty soon after I, you know, started adding the space switcher, spaces are one of my favorite shift features, as we know. So I have a personal space here with a few apps, and then I have my workspace, and then I have a, a space for my side hustle, which is a music bingo app. So I'll plug that here shamelessly moments into this call. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is, this is my, sort of my main workspace that I use for shift. Um, I have Gmail anchored to my space that will set a particular app to be kind of the home app in your space. You can see it's extracted my, my profile picture here so I can tell, but okay. it doesn't have to be an email app actually. Like we've in, in the latest version of shift, you could, you could make any app your anchor. Um, so it's a pretty powerful feature. I notice on your space icon, there's an unread there. Now, yeah. what does that represent? Yeah, so that's going to roll up notifications from anywhere in my space, anywhere in my apps. So this one's coming from Slack. This will be an aggregate kind of of everything in my space. If you wanted to change any of this, how would you go about doing that? Like if you wanted to customize a little bit more, tweak things. Yeah, for sure. So you can come to the, the quick settings icon here and you can just go to this build your browser feature. And this is this is where you can edit your your layout. So you could start with a template that we've provided, or you can dive in to moving your bars around. If I wanted to move this over here, I can do that pretty easily into vertical mode. I can undo changes easily too. So if you want to just experiment a bit, yeah. And then you can, you can dive right into each control button. Maybe I, maybe I need to see downloads. I want easier access to those. I can easily do that and save. And there you go. You know, out of all the features that we've been adding over this time, what do you, what do you find the one that's like saving you the most time or you can kind of can consider your favorite feature? Yeah. One thing I tend to do is in my apps that I've pinned here, mm -hmm. I actually like to set a particular custom URL that will be the home um, page. Oh, not app. just, not just the login screen, like go like a little yeah. bit deeper in. Yeah. So for example, this one for, for GitHub, I have a URL that I use for a specific list of open pull requests that uh, my team creates. And I use that as my homepage here. So that's one thing that's just a little bit extra that you can go beyond. You don't have to have a default to whatever the app home screen is. And then beyond that, a feature that we're we're about to release pretty soon is something called smart link handling, where I can right click on a link that's going to a different app. See, I have Jira installed over here and I can actually open this link 
in Jira. And instead of adding it to my kind of regular browser tabs, which are up here on the top bar, it will open that in my Jira app and sort of group them together there. And that's kind of like, you know, tab grouping, pinned apps and bookmarks kind of all rolled into one for me. So I can keep them organized pretty easily. And I, I really like that one. So I know this feature, obviously we, we designed it, but we call this the app tab strip so that as you have an app like Jira and many developers and PMs like myself have several Jira tabs open, but if they're all commingled among a general tab strip, you're hunting and pecking for that one that you want. But now all my Jira tabs are open kind of in the Jira app and I can see them very quickly when I move over. So I can see that being a huge time saver and helping with productivity. Definitely, because, you know, when I switch away to other things or if I browse just a regular web search, it's, you know, as soon as I return to Jira, everything's all there for me. Yeah. So keeps it out of my way until I need it. Is there anything else about your setup that you'd like to share? One thing I also noticed as I was building my setup is I think I liked having my spaces and apps on the right side of the screen, just because most apps tend to have sidebars of their own. And it's nice to kind of maximize the screen real estate of the website itself, like the app itself. So I found putting my sidebar over on the right helped me kind of stay out of the way of that stuff. It's less common for perhaps to have something over on the right edge. So that's why I've, that's why I put this over here, not just to be different. And then the other thing I'm using spacers here to control the, the alignment of the apps on the bar, because they do apps will generally default to the end of the bar and controls to the opposite end, but you can, you can control that with inserting spacers on either side. Did I see under the control, something called a grid control? Yeah. So a grid is basically a container. You can usually, you can, you can use it to contain apps or controls. So maybe I'll create a, another bar here and I'll drag a grid over here. So I could actually move my Asana app over here, maybe chat GPT, but I could create another one and maybe pop in a reload button, forward button, and maybe I could put a separator in between there. So yeah, grids are, grids are pretty powerful. You can organize a lot of content there. You could also drag bookmarks into a grid. You can still collapse the sidebar and it'll you know, intelligently respond into the single column. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the grid. You can also, um, my spaces over here are in a grid as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. What would you consider the most sort of underrated feature of shift? Oh, that's a good question. Something that jumps to mind is the ability to add many instances of the same app in a, in a single space and have them being logged into multiple different accounts. Um, I know a lot of users enjoy that. So Matt, you know, for a lot of people who may watch this video, they're using shift for the first time. What would be your tip to them to get the most out of shift? Yeah, it's a great question. I think I alluded to it a bit earlier where I found it really helpful to kind of start from the basics, remove uh, a bunch of elements from the UI using our build your browser feature and start just bringing them back in when you find that you need them rather than throwing everything you have, all the browser controls you're used to and starting from there. I think it's, it's pretty powerful to keep it minimal and to adjust it as you go. It's really easy to edit on the fly. You could change it for different types of, of work that you're doing. You could create new spaces for that are almost more temporary for maybe you're doing some research on something like that, but it's, you know, very easy to, to change your setup more often than just at the beginning when you start using shift. I think that's an amazing tip. I really want to thank you for your time today. I know you're busy and, and building all the next great features that we're going to have in shift. It's very exciting. It's my pleasure, Michael. I'm honored. Thanks for having me.